Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on globalization and television. This lecture is part of your paper on media and globalization. In this lecture we will look at some of those approaches to explore the relationship between globalization and television and how the two impacted the lives of the people. The world witnessed tectonic shift in early 90s as a result of shift towards globalization and liberalization there are various approaches towards defining globalization and its impact on television industry its content and viewership in this lecture we will look at some of those approaches and explore the relationship between globalization and television and how the two approaches the lives of the people this lecture will also visit the concerns that arose in the process in this lecture you will be introduced to developments in the field of satellite broadcasting role of communication especially television in accelerating the process of globalization reinterpretation of the idea of sovereignty and nation state due to broadcasting beyond borders issues related to cultural hegemony contradictory flow among others due to rapid changes in television broadcasting the global village model of marshall mcluhan states that advances in communication technologies and its convergence with data processing will lead to the world becoming a smaller place with the compression of distance and the potential cultural homogenization that some communications technology can bring about Raymond Williams differed with medium is the message view and believed that new technologies such as television offered the viewers opportunities for new forms of expression outside the locus of control of transnational corporations and media moguls Television especially satellite television has played a significant role in the compression of space and time this compression is what gedens called the hallmark of globalization narayan states that globalization and advancement in information technologies are increasingly being cited as the factors responsible for changing relations between developed and developing countries She adds that technological changes along the lines of digitization, convergence, fiber optics and use of satellite may be contributing towards globalization. Global television and global telecommunication appear to be both a consequence as well as a cause of the process of globalization. Television has escalated the pace of change both in developing and developed countries. The concern for balanced flow of information as outlined by UNESCO for a new world information and communication order in 1976 have further been problematized by the complexity of this fast pace change brought about by transnational television networks Historically broadcast stations transmitted their programs through terrestrial signals Today satellite transmission has become a more viable alternative relaying programs not just within the nation but also transnationally it made distribution of telecasts from distant places faster as seen during the coverage of gulf war in 1991 the distribution of television has also moved on to the web using fiber optics Mobiles have now emerged as a converged platforms for multimedia content including television. Globalization and television, the Indian context. Globalization and satellite technology have been credited to have ushered an era of global television in India from a nation dependent on the state run television channel Doordarshan. India became a country of multiple channels diverse programming 
A good number of them sourced from USA and Britain and in English language. This sudden increase in the number of channels and amount of content was a disruption in the world of communication that changed the way Indians saw the world. Understanding Globalization Global change is occurring in economic, social, political and cultural spheres. Globalization has been defined in various ways by different scholars depending upon their discipline. Globalization has been termed as the distinguishing characteristics of the present moment. Globalization is marked by four characteristics. They are Integration of financial sector, growth of transnational corporations, creation of global markets, rapid changes in communication technology. Globalization is also understood in more abstract and cultural terms as compression of time and space. According to Manuel Cassels, globalization is the process that constitutes a social system with the capacity to work as a unit on a planetary scale in real or chosen time. Globalization has its list of discontents as well, especially in countries like India that are developing economies. Joseph Stiglitz says, I believe that globalization, the removal of barriers to free trade and the closer integration of national economics can be a force for good and that it has the potential to enrich everyone in the world, particularly poor. But I also believe that if this is to be the case, the way globalization has been managed, including the international trade agreements that have played such a large role in removing those barriers and the policies that have been imposed on developing countries in the process of globalization need to be radically rethought. Boyd Barrett see globalization as an extension of cultural imperialism, the process leading to colonization of communication space. Amartya Sen said that the native cultures in globalizing world are threatened, but the process of globalization is unstoppable in competitive world. Hence, there cannot be a solution. James Curran and Meng Jin Park have argued, Globalization theory is often based on an aerial perspective that simplifies in particular. It tends to understate the continuing importance of the nation. Globalization is also seen in the context of demise of communism, the integration of world markets and rapid advances in communication technology. These advances have been the result of the extension of free trade and free flow of information as dominant philosophies. It is believed that communication has played a central role in the accelerating the progress of globalization. In this new environment, the role of the state came under scrutiny. Also, some scholars maintain that globalization is accompanied with trends towards localization. Many feared that the globalization would often lead to cultural imperialism. But the experience so far says that the state has been resilient on many fronts. Raymond Williams envisaged a globalized world pulled between fans and frenetic nationalism and reckless and uncontrollable transnationalism. Over the years, a pattern of contraflow has emerged while whereby the developing countries that are usually the consumers, markets and not the producer of the content have slowly emerged as producers of content primarily targeted at Indian diaspora. A small attempt at reversing the process of the altered nature of international communication. Daya Tuso quotes Castle, who argues that flows dominate contemporary life. Our society is constructed around flows. Tuso examines dominant flows, largely 
emanating from the global north followed by contraflows originating from the erstwhile peripherals of global media industries designated as subaltern flows. The growth of satellite television in India Transnational satellite television was introduced with the telecast of Gulf War in 1991 by CNN. The growth of satellite television in India altered the way people watched television. Suddenly, small unregulated private cable television systems sprung up to distribute satellite broadcast signal throughout many urban areas. With more choice of viewing available, even smaller towns had access to them through cable te television. The fast pace at which cable television grew can be gauged from the fact that by 1992 there were 1.2 million homes with cable network. This number more than doubled in one year. By 1993, there were 3 million homes connected to cable network and then the figure quadrupled by 94 to reach 11.8 million homes. The initial programs by Star TV led to accusations of cultural imperialism. But language barriers and political and economic empowerment of middle class are said to have stood in the way of such a scenario. Z emerged as the favorite among Hindi-speaking middle class as a profitable channel. Home TV, Hindustan Times, Sony Entertainment Television, E. Nadu joined the bandwagon. As Kohli describes what was so far a cottage industry of types run by cable operators offering channels from Star, C or local cable channels was becoming bigger and bigger. In the mid-90s, the international channels were competing in North as well as South along with channels run by Indian entrepreneurs. This period also saw the growth of Sun TV as India's largest non-Hindi television player. It began with one channel, went on to expand to 30 channels and garnered dominant viewership in four southern states of India. By 95-96, the multi-service operators MSO joined the chain of television distribution network. The MSO served as a wholesaler of the signal while the small operators remain the retailers. At that point, the small operators were the most powerful link as the last mile access to homes was controlled by them. The concern about homogenization of culture was articulated as the middle class watched similar channels beaming English language programming of CNN, BBC, Star News or Cartoon Network. Satellite television created a new cultural market which overcame the limitations of geographical boundaries. Satellites have been global agent of change contributing to spread of technology, news, culture, sports, entertainment, economic markets, global politics and many more. James Nesbitt argued that satellite systems were creating the global village, not television by itself. In India, the penetration of television channels increased Manifold. By 93, there were 40 million television households. This number more than doubled to over 80 million in just 10 years. By 1991, India had just one channel, that is Doordarshan. In 2005, there were more than 200 digital channels. Doordarshan also witnessed drastic changes in its management and content in the period from 1993 to 1998. While the market for television expanded, the country remained cautious and this got reflected in the historic judgment of the Indian Supreme Court on airwaves in 1995. It said, airwaves of frequencies are public property. Their use had to be controlled and regulated by a public authority in the interest of the public and to prevent invasion of their rights. The Prasar Bharti Acts of 1990 and the Cable Television Network Regulation Act 1995 were introduced. A broadcasting corporation was established through the former and the later guided the business of transmission through cable to the Indian households by 
providing programming code. Nation, state and globalization of television. The state controlled electronic media, Doordarshan and All India Radio have played a central role in the shaping of national identity. They have been used for championing the language of nationalism. National radio and television have assisted in reinterpreting histories. They have been the custodians of Indian culture. Satellite television has disrupted this structure as it caused maintenance of national sovereignty and integrity difficult as units of economic and cultural production became transnational. Satellite television created more restricted audience with strictly commercial objectives. It underestimated the importance of nation. Also, a Western technology with capitalist marketing system as a system of influence was seen as hostile force in many parts of the world and in India too. Globalization of television in India facilitated nominal reversal of the free flow of information. For example, Z has footfall beyond India. So does NDTV and many other channels. These channels and their programs have not only been received by the citizens of the countries where they are telecasting, they have also struck an emotional chord with the Indian diaspora, over 25 million living in those countries. Telecommunications, television, computer and internet have brought people geographically distant, closer in space and time. Arjun Apadurai has argued that satellite television has helped to create what he calls diasporic public spheres. Transformation of television news and entertainment from public service broadcasting. With the arrival of market-driven satellite channels, the role of Doordarshan as a public service broadcaster became point of discussion and debate for the bureaucrats managing it. Simultaneously, growth of private satellite channels became arenas for engaging public as never seen before. Nalin Mehta writes, Satellite television after decades of state monopoly over the medium has engendered a transformation in India's political and public culture, the nature of state and expressions of Indian nationhood. Much like India's newspaper revolution and the cassette culture, the availability Privately produced satellite television has meant that people discovered new ways to think about themselves and to participate in politics that would have been unthinkable a generation before. New developments in the broadcasting industry have been breathtaking in their scope and in the challenges that they present to broadcasters, both public and private, but more so for a government-run public broadcasting service. For unlike private broadcasters, public broadcasting is bound by its mandate to offer programming that is not just commercially driven but one that educates, informs and entertains the majority of the people. However noble its intentions, a public broadcaster has ultimately to operate in an industry that becomes aggressively competitive even as government funding becomes more and more inaccessible. So it faces the twin challenges of offering programming that has to meet public interest objective while competing for resources with private broadcasters who are not bound by any such public oriented motives. Indrajit Banerjee writes that the growth private channels made the role of public service broadcasting more significant in addressing the diverse needs of viewers whom private television channels did not address. Public service broadcasting has been placed in a highly market-driven economy. Therefore, public broadcasting has been taken over by profit-driven broadcasting and indirectly controlled by advertisers. Despite unprecedented growth of internet, television remained the most global and powerful media. Rupert Murdoch's Star TV transformed news and entertainment on television in India. The initial years of privatized television was marked by Murdoch-led experiments and alliances with Indian organizations and entrepreneurs. It entered into alliances with Z, NDTV and later with Tata for the DTH services. The programs kept changing to meet the Indian local taste and language. 
Z moved out to the alliance and gave a tough competition to Star. Star began by beaming Prime Sports. It later added MTV, BBC and Star TV to its bouquet. Subhash Chandra's ZTV launched in October 1992 became India's first privately owned Hindi satellite channel. It began with three-hour largely film-based programming broadcast before graduating to a 24-hour broadcast of sitcoms and soaps. Tabloidization of television news became the standard format. Tiusu says that news in the period became neoliberal in its ideology, championing the cause of the free market. As Shakuntla Rao writes, globalization of Indian broadcast landscape despite market pressures has allowed Indian journalists to seek accountability from the government and has given audiences a broadcast voice. While increasing pro-market focus of news content diminishes emphasis on public service and democratic debates. In many instances, broadcast journalists give voice to the voiceless and seek accountability from police and political actors. The content of Bollywood increased with time, not just in entertainment but also in news. Kaun Baniga Karorpati became an instant hit, prompting more regional programming on similar format. Thiusu maps the changing trend and says that cricket came to occupy the televised imaginations of the people. Metropolitan news, read as urban news content, increased. Sensational and crime reporting capable of capturing eyeballs increased. There were less and less foreign news, while apparently it seemed that more media meant more and hence diverse content. Chusu says that in a market-driven media environment, such populism may in fact be undermining the quality of debate. These developments have given way to consolidation and digitization of television. The emerging trend is that ownership and distribution of television channels is largely concentrated in few hands. Star, Sony, Z, Sun and Network 18 control over 65% of all TV viewing in India, according to Kohli in 2008. Six large DTH operators control 51 million homes. The scenario is similar on cable channels where a few operators are the key players. With penetration on internet and mobile telephony, many scholars see a shift towards mobile television. In this era of convergence, a good number of ventures have come to provide audio-visual content in the form of news, serials, cinema and games on mobile platform. This could mark the beginning of the end of television as we know it and beginning of news New converged television adding a newer dimensions to the process of globalization. The decade of 1990 witnessed globalization and expansion of television that changed the media landscape in most parts of the world. From controlled and limited telecast, television multiplies manifold and change the nature of viewership, especially in South Asia. Many say this expansion as extension of cultural imperialism hegemony from the West. Another perspective posits that globalization is an irreversible process and television increased its pace by making the shift visible and to some extent acceptable to the local viewers. In this lecture, we learned about the changes that were witnessed by nations due to globalization and television with a focus on India. As we got oriented to the changes satellite television brought about, we were introduced to India's emergence as promising market for cultural products through transnational television programming. We learnt about theoretical takes of scholars on the changes that private and public service broadcasters underwent in then-emerging media landscape. Thank you.